The focus of this lesson is on finding the vertex of a quadratic function that is not in standard form. And so a quadratic function is f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are real numbers and a cannot be zero. And so it's basically a polynomial whose degree is two. So when we're in the form, f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, we cannot see all the transformations that occurred on the parent function, f of x equals x squared. And so that means that the vertex is not obvious to us. Whereas if we were in standard form, it would be more visible and we could go straight to what the vertex is. So we're going to deal with the case when we're not in standard form, we're in our more general form. And in that case, there's a formula that we have to apply. So before getting into using that formula, you want to make sure that your polynomial, your quadratic, is in descending order of power. So start with the highest power and work your way down. So negative 3x squared plus 5x plus 2. Make sure when you're moving those terms that you take the sign in front of them with them so that you have the right signs at the end of the day. And so now you're in that form of ax squared plus bx plus c, so it becomes more obvious who your a is, who your b is, and who your c is. So a is negative 3, b is 5, and c is 2. So now, if you want to determine your vertex, your vertex is just an ordered pair, so it's some x comma y, if you will. And um, the x value is basically the opposite of b over 2a. Well, b is 5, so the opposite of 5 is negative 5. And then 2 times a is just 2 times negative 3. So you get negative 5 divided by negative 6. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. So it's a positive 5 6. So that's your x value of your vertex. In fact, you can, if you want to, you can go straight to writing that in. So we still need to get the y value. But the y value comes from, just like it always does, if you had the x, to get the y, it would just be your function evaluated at the x. So in this case, your function evaluated at the opposite of b over 2a. But we know that the opposite of b over 2a was 5, 6. So it's just f evaluated at that 5, 6, that x value you just determined. So don't overcomplicate it. It's just evaluated at the value you just got for x. That'll give you your y. So this is negative 3 times x squared plus 5 times x, but don't write in the x, plus 2. And why we're not writing in the x? Because our x is 5 6. So we'll put in 5 6 for x. And then we need to simplify and be careful with all our math. So this is negative 3 over 1 times, make sure you're following order of operation, so we need to take 5, 6 and square it, which is 5, 6 times 5, 6, which is 25, 36, plus 5 over 1 times 5 over 6, plus 2 over 1. And I'm just writing everything fractional, because at the end of the day I have to add these, so they're going to need a common denominator when I go to add. So this is negative 75, over 36, when I multiply, add 25 over 6 plus 2 over 1. The common denominator for 36, 6, and 1 is 36, so I need to rewrite all of my fractions so that they have 36 in the denominator. So for the second fraction here, I need to multiply by 6 to get a 36. But what I do to the bottom, I do to the top. So 25 times 6 is 150, and then 6 times 6 is the 36. Plus, for this third fraction, we need to multiply by 36 to get a 36 in the denominator. What you do to the denominator, do to the numerator, and you get 72 over 36. If you add all of those up, you get 147 over 36. 
So that's the y value of your vertex. So 147 over 36, and you're done.